Deathcore. One of my favorite, if not my favorite genre of all time. And in this video, I'm going to take you through five albums that, in my opinion, are peak Deathcore from said bands that the albums are from these is in my opinion best albums that these bands have put out in their careers and obviously before it went woke if you're wondering am i gonna milk this yes god damn it i'm gonna milk this because all of you guys made me famous for it okay my instagram's blowing up my youtube's blowing up my twitter not so much go hate on me over there a little bit so i can get some traction thank you let's get straight into this all these albums i put into one playlist one spotify playlist link in the description dead core before it went woke number one in this playlist Tyrant by Aversion's Crown. Oh my god, what an album. See, for me, a good album is good production, good songwriting. The tones are very important for me in Deathcore, especially guitar tones and snare, something that really, really drives me when it comes to a good Deathcore album and great vocal range from the vocalist. And Tyrant by Aversion's Crown, when Hollow Planet dropped, oh my god. When Hollow Planet dropped, I dropped, okay? That shit was... Mm. Oh, so good, but all the other songs, Glass Sentient, Conqueror, Vectors, such a good song. Such simple riff writing in Vectors, but so good. And one of the few bands, in my opinion, that utilizes an 8-string really, really well. They don't use it to constantly gent all the time or just play the low strings. They incorporate riffs on 8th string that I would never think of. If you play guitar, you notice if you go from 6 to 7, you start writing differently. And if you go from 7 to 8, you start writing even more differently. And these guys write 6 string riffs on 8 string guitars and it sounds absolutely insane. Obviously, drummer, absolute beast. Love him so much. Met him a few times. Great guy. All great guys, really. Uh, yeah, Tyra definitely peak. Deathcore. Number two on this list is an album and a band that I found because of a version Crown, because a version Crown was touring with Rings of Saturn and A Night in Texas. Wow. I don't think I've ever heard a band that was so new back in the day and was so good live. Absolutely insane. The God Delusion, amazing album. For the time it came out as well, great production. Again, this was still a very small band back then, but the vocalist in A Night in Texas. Oh, those screeching highs. The riff writing on this album is very technical death metal, but you can tell that it's corified. The guitar tones on this are absolutely amazing. You can hear every note. It's so clear. It's so bright. It's Oh, production on this and some of the best breakdowns from the era are on that album. Number three on this list, technically not all deathcore, but I'm going to put them in there because they were a huge influence on the scene back then. Within the Ruins with Phenomena. That album, God Amongst Men, Calling Card, Enigma, Clockwork, Ataxia 3. Within the Ruins is unique in their own way because of how they write and how they produce. It's very edit to the grid. It starts and stops in places where you don't expect it. The guitar tones are very different than from what anyone else was doing back then and they tune down to drop Q or some shit like that. Absolutely amazing album. Their newer stuff, really not that good. I don't think they will ever top Phenomena. One of the best albums in Deathcore slash death metal. Let's put it like that. Number four, this album. I, I cannot explain how much this influenced my songwriting when it comes to incorporating orchestra or live classical instruments in music. Reclaimer by Shadow of Intent. Wow, what an album. Halo themed alien core. Sign me the fuck up. Of course, Ben with his monstrous vocals makes like 70% of the album, but the riff writing is absolutely insane. And this is some real tough stuff, okay? I've tried learning Shadow of Intent songs for many years now, and there are just songs on there that I cannot reach. So hard, so fast. It's all so clean. That's the hardest part. Shadow of Intent is super, super clean. Also live, absolutely amazing band, but Reclaimer, Wow, the horror within, the heretic prevails, the great schism. <laughs> such a, such a good album. And they went more dead metal now, although their new single goes pretty hard back into the deathcore roots. So I hope they're going back to that core a little bit. I love that metal, don't get me wrong, but something in a breakdown just breaks me and I like that a lot. Now last but not least, everyone's favorite band and right now everyone's favorite vocalist as well. Thigh Art is Murder and their album Hate. I couldn't think for a better album to fit in this playlist because oh 
my god. I, I think this album literally influenced 80% of teenagers back then to get their ears stretched. It's insane. The impact that this album has had is absolutely insane. Every classic's on here, Reign of Darkness. Apparently I forgot to turn my alerts off. Caro, if you're watching this, thank you for the sub. Every classic's on this album, Reign of Darkness, Purest Reign of Hate, Shadow of Eternal Sin, Immolation, Gates of Misery, Dead Sun, Banger album. You would think this is a compilation of Thy Artist Murder, but the album is just so good. Absolutely amazing album and CJ's vocals on this. This is where I started doing vocals, where I started learning how to scream. CJ was a huge inspiration on this album. Together with Reclaimer from Shadow of Intent, two very, very big inspirations for me back in the day. Yeah, if you want to check this playlist out, it's linked in the description below, Deathcore before it went woke. This is my personal opinion. Let me know in the comment section what album that I missed. And if you want to know why I'm milking this so much, go check out this video. You're going to like it.